Hey guys, welcome to the channel. And um, it's bodywork season. So I have been doing a little bit of bodywork on here. I did a little bit on the tail panel back here. Got a lot more to get started on, but part of that requires air compressor and sanders and things like that. And I am really bad about forgetting and leaving it on. I'll come out and work on stuff, turn it on, go out of the shop. And if I don't hear it running, if it's not running when I leave the shop, I will a lot of times forget to turn it off. So this video at the beginning of it is just going to be about a very simple way that you can have the compressor turn off when you leave your shop. Really, really simple, cheap parts. And uh, anybody can do it with a little bit of a uh, little bit. If you're a little bit, have a little bit of technical know-how and a little bit of about electricity, you can do it. If not, you know, have somebody else do it for you. But this is about as simple of a project like this as you can do. So I've already got it set up over here. So I'm going to turn around and we'll go look at that. All right. So uh, really simply, I've got a plastic box. And this plastic box has one cord that falls off because I've got it stuck up here in magnets. And I put it too hard. Let's try this again. One cord coming out of this box goes to the receptacle in the wall. Another cord goes to the compressor. And this cord goes somewhere else. And like I said, this is a very, very simple thing to do. Just a box with a grid in the back. I like these plastic boxes with a grid. One, they're waterproof, they're dustproof, whereas a metal box is generally not. And with this grid in the back, you've got something to mount your relays and other things too. Makes life a lot nicer when you can do it that way. And uh, this box is too big. Uh, in the future, I plan on possibly making this uh, Wi-Fi controllable. And the reason for that is that I'm running a line from the shop all the way to the back of the house to the front of the house. So if I'm at the, in the garage and I want to air up some tires, I don't want to have to come all the way to the shop to turn the compressor on. I just get on my phone, turn it on, do it remotely. So that's something I'm going to do in the future as well. And I also have more spots here. So when this compressor eventually is uh, moved to the other side of that wall outside in its own little home. And it will probably have a, um, a uh, probably a vacuum out there as well. And so I'll probably have a vacuum control. And then I'll probably have a, well, before that, I'll actually have a relay in here that will be Wi-Fi controllable for to turn the irrigation well pump on and off with. So, I mean, this, this is as simple and basic as it gets with lots of camera wobble. Okay. You've got, you have a line and load. Line is your power from the wall. Load is your pump. And you will run one to here, one to here. So you say here, line is up here. I think it's line is up here. I'm at a, a weird angle here. But uh, you have your, your two hots for your line and your two hots for your load. So in and then out. One of them is connected all of the time. Only one side is actually switched, just the way it is on some of these. So really simple. All your grounds go together and they get mounted to the leg down here. If this is a metal box, it'd be a little easier. Um, now this co other cord we have coming in, it's got two wires here and there is a terminal on either side of this relay. And it doesn't matter which, what you put where, put one on one side, one on the other. And that gives us just right now, just gives us an extension cord at the end of this. So at the end of this. Wow, this is going really well. That magnet is not quite strong enough to hold that weight. In the extension cord, I've got a plug here. So it's really simple how this works. Let me get the camera around here so I can see what I'm filming. It is really, really, really simple. Like I said, this is, this is very simple stuff. So when I turn the lights on, I have this outlet tied into my lighting circuit. This is a single outlet. So it is only used for lighting. And in this case, it's only used for this plug right here. And I'm going to fight with this for a second. And you're going to hear that click. Um, unfortunately, this is I have to fight with it because it's a tamper resistant receptacle, which I absolutely hate. And you hear the click. Now, it's not plugged in right now. And I'll, I'll put in a little video of it actually in, in action. Through the magic of temporary zip ties, we're hanging off the beam over here. Hope you can see that. But yeah, temporarily we're just hanging here because 
I've got insulation above. I've got I'm adding two by fours and insulating and, and OSB in front of this. So all this is going to come off here pretty soon and get re add more insulation and get an actual board I can mount things to. So there's a lot of temporary. So uh, right now we plug this into here. Oh, I hate temper resistant stuff. We're plugged in. Now I turn this on. Works as normal. Now I'm going to turn this on and go turn the lights off. We're in the dark. Air compressor shut off. Works. That's all it takes. So when I turn the lights off, compressor goes off. Now there is on compressors like this, you do have a, on your switch there, normally when it kicks off, it will depressurize the pump. That is a, it, it isn't a valid issue. Now you're not likely to turn this off and then immediately, you know, while it's running and then turn it right back on. You're gonna turn the lights off, it's gonna be off, even if it has pressure in there, when you turn the light switch off, it's gonna sit long enough that that pressure is gonna bleed off and it's not really gonna be an issue when it kicks back on. So it's, it's an issue, but it's a non-issue. Don't worry about it. And if you're running a smaller compressor, uh, those don't have the, uh, the unloaders to do that. They actually have a little hole in the side of the piston that constantly bleeds, so it, it, it doesn't build up uh, a pressure like these do. So, now, now to the part that's not involved with that, and I was, uh, I decided, hey, I'm doing, uh, doing this compressor thing, this simple little switch, and I'm going to fold this down and hope it doesn't fall off. Stay. Now, I decided, hey, you know, while I'm doing this, uh, let me go ahead and pull it out from the wall, because this compressor has sat here for probably 10 years now. It's since it's been moved, probably longer than that. It's probably been sitting here for over 10 years in the same spot. So it had a lot of dirt and, and junk underneath it. And part of my uh, shop improvement program uh, is uh, my comfort in the shop improvement. And this being a metal building, um, all you have for insulation is this fiberglass uh, insulation. And um, this is really not much and it is, it is pinched here. So they, there is this is a radiator. There's no uh, insulation between here and the outside. The sun hits the metal. The heat from the metal gets transferred through this here, and you can understand why the complaint there. You can actually see where it's touching the two by fours here and it's not there because it's compressed and it's not a good use of insulation. But this is just the way these are done. So what I've been doing is I will come in and cut this, cut this here, let this puff back out to here, and then I add extra insulation with my two by fours here, and then I'm able to put plywood up. And it's really handy, like this wall I have over here. Now, as you can see, that wall over there, you know, I've got things mounted to the wall. That, to me, that's just novel that I can actually mount something on a wall. Because in a metal building like this, a, a hammer, yeah, the only place you have to mount anything is right here, the bottom, the top and a few in the ed posts in the corners and things like that. You've got these, I think they're about three inch um, uh, steel posts at every corner and every 10 feet and, you know, and everywhere. There's just, there's nowhere to mount anything and it's not really well insulated. So I said, hey, I'm gonna yank it all out. I'm gonna clean it. I'm gonna get the two by fours and start neatening up this because this, this is a mess and a nightmare over here. Air system needs some more, uh, some love on over here because <sighs> That's just, that's just not a good way to set it up. I've got it, you know, going straight up out of there with no T, no drip T. It's not really a, a good solution right now. And that filtration is way too small for what I really need. Uh, I used to have another one, but it, uh, it, it just leaked and it, it just had, it had to go. So that's on my list of things that I need is a, a new air filtration for my, for my shop air. And I want something that's a good filtration, not just a, very basic one like uh, this one here. Um, so something a little better, that's even pro preferably with a uh, desiccant in it as well, would be really nice, uh, especially for uh, a separate air, separate one for painting versus just running tools. Tools don't really, you can live without the desiccant. 
but yeah, you guys complain I talk too much, but I like to give out lots of information. So bear with me. So anyway, I'm working on this and getting to that point, and I decide, hey, I'm going to take, uh, you know, I've got to take the the sh the outlet for the um, for the air compressor was right here, and this outlet was there, this was here, so all this stuff has got to get remounted. Well, as you can see, that's brand new, and the reason for that is this is the one I was using. Now this is kind of the standard uh, flush mount type of uh, receptacle that. Uh, this one's probably, well, there's no telling how old this one is. This one is probably pretty old. Um, and, you know, you keep these things and you use them forever. And when I took it off, um, there was a wire dangling in here. And I I took it, I undid the screw, I put it back in, line it up, I tightened the screw all the way down. It's not, And it's not holding. It's, everything looks fine, but it's not holding. And basically, you can look kind of look at it. And you can see it's like this one, it's this one right here. It's this one right here. And what happened was, is this little tang was just, and I couldn't tell at the time, was just floating in the breeze because it was on that the tab in the hole. And it was not getting tight. So most likely that happened when I took it apart and just me bumping the wire was enough to finally snap this off the rest of the way. But uh, it's something that, you know, if you guys have got old ones like this that you've reused in the past, and I would say, hey, you know, you might want to, you know, if you ever take it apart for a reason, take a good look at it, or maybe just go ahead and, you know, 86 it, put it in the circular file, and, and, and get a new one. So that's what I did over here, is I've got a brand new one to go in over here. Um, but this, this, this does happen, because this is brass, and, you know... Yeah, things, things wear out and things go bad. So that's about all I've got at the moment. Like I said, that was just a really quick, um, you know, a uh, little simple thing that you can do for your uh, air compressor. And uh, that way the thing's not running all night long. Or if you go, you know, you're, you're out for a while and it kicks on and kicks off as your system leaks. So uh, I will leave links in, in the uh, thing below. Uh, and uh, yes, they are Amazon affiliate links because, you know, you know, uh, I buy most of my stuff at Amazon. So, and it's say, hey, you know, if, if this is if I buy it and use it, that's what I use. Uh, I'll put a link to the box to the relay, as well as the gland nuts, which you will probably this comes with two glands with it, I believe. Yeah, it came with two gland nuts with it. It will only fit the small cord in this case. It won't fit the bigger cords, so you'll need bigger ones of those. But I'll put a link below. They're like, uh, I don't know, they're, they're really cheap for what they are. I think they're 10 or 12 bucks for a, a big assortment of them. And you'll have more than you'll need and versus just going to the store and buying them for a, a fortune, if they even have them locally where you are, because they are not easy to get locally usually. But uh, yeah, I'll leave the link down below. And in the future, if anybody's ever, ever really interested, and just, uh, you know, put in the, the uh, comments below if you're interested in me uh, doing the Wi-Fi control on this. And because uh, the first one I'll get Wi-Fi control will be the well pump. And then I will also do, if I can get a two-channel one, I may do the well pump and the air compressor at the same time. And that way I can turn them on remotely, which would be really handy, especially for obviously irrigation. And then, you know, if I'm out front and I need uh, air out in the garage, I don't have to make the, the long trip out here and the long trip all the way back. It's a long way. And you have to go around and it's just not a straight shot to get here. So it's just a little uh, little quality of life improvement there. So see you later. And uh, the next video coming out is going to be uh, probably filler and sanding and things like that. That'll probably be the next video out because that's, that's what I'm going to be working on.